today I'm going to speak about brands, logos, and trademarks. Okay? Here are some of your more well-known brands, trademarks, and logos. Which one is your favorite? KFC? <laughs> Sorry, next slide. Okay, so what is a brand name? What is a brand logo? And what is a trademark? So you all know Adidas? Okay. So that is the what? That's the brand name. Okay. You see the colors? That's the brand logo. And then everything together, you can say is the trademark. Okay. So when you see the logo or the brand name, you know from which company it is. Adidas have a few brand names and brand logos. Sorry, logos only. Only one brand name. <laughs> Some of the trademarks don't have the brand name, like the blue one. But you still know it is Adidas without the brand name. So, where did the name Adidas come from? Well, the company is a German company, and the founder, the guy that started the company, is called Adolf Dazler. People called him Adi. Okay? So, Adi plus Das equals Adidas. Very creative. Okay. Nike. You might know Nike as well. Or Nike. Sorry. Nike. Nike. It's an American company. The first, they were called Blue Ribbon Sports or BRS. Okay. BRS. Is that a good brand name? Built roads swiftly. Broken robot snake. Bland rotten sandwiches, black rosy socks, bad rat shoes. I don't think that's a good brand name, BRS. So luckily, they changed it to Nike or Nike, and the company's name is now Nike Inc. or Nike Incorporated. And they have a wonderful brand name and trademark, and sometimes you don't even know how to see the brand name to recognize the company or its products. The characteristics of a good brand name. What makes a brand name a good brand name? Firstly, it should not mean something bad in another language. You can't pick a word that means something bad in another language. That's not very smart. It should be fairly easy to pronounce. How do you pronounce Huawei? Is that right? But they are successful. Easy to remember. Okay? The brand name should be easy to remember. And it should be unique. Okay? That's very important. The brand name or, and the logo and everything should be unique. So, you probably have seen this R next to some of the logos and the brands. Okay, so this is Nike and Adidas. Can you see those R's? That means that trademark is registered and no one else may use it on their products. So a brand name is very important and it's important to protect your brand name. To start your own business, you obviously need a name for your company. What will your company's name be? If you start your own company, let's say you want to sell dim sum or shoes or maybe teaching services. Maybe you want to be a teacher and you want to sell your teaching services. So I know a very, very good teacher. His name is Mr. Groves. Probably one of the best ever. Okay. So I want to partner with Mr. Groves. So we'll call it Van Groves English Teaching Incorporated. Okay. 
And the brand name will just be Van Groves. Okay? Any good company like Van Groves English Teaching Incorporated needs a good logo. Okay? What will the logo look like? Maybe that's a good logo. And then, what is this? This is our brand name. And that everything is trademarked. This is such a good brand name and logo, we have to register it. Okay? So no one else uses it. Okay? So that's hard work. Start your own business, get a good brand. So why am I talking about brands today? This is an interesting, funny topic. What is today's date? You know? It's 7 11, the 7th of November. And this is one of my most favorite brands. Okay, 7 Eleven. Why are they called 7 Eleven? You know? Long time ago, they used to open at 7 and close at 11 at night. And that used to be very early and very late. Okay? So that's why they are called 7 Eleven. Now they're open almost 24 hours. Okay? So I would sometimes say, let's go to 7 Eleven. Let's go to 7 Eleven. Or I would say, let's go to a 7 Eleven. Because in my mind, any shop that is open until late or opens really early is a 7 Eleven. It could be a Circle K or any of the other shops. But in my mind, I just say 7 Eleven. And my friends know we just need to go to any shop that is open at late at night. So it's synonym for me, any convenience store open until late. So I just use the 7-Eleven brand for any shop that is open until late or opens really early. So that's a problem for 7-Eleven when brands become too general. Like Google, you all know this? Let's Google it. What is that? A noun or a verb? Let's Google it. That's a verb. Okay. Well, Googling. I was busy Googling about birds. And I found a pink, black, orange bird. So that's what's happening to Google's brand name. It's becoming too general. Everyone is just using it. Okay. So what do we call this? You know? We call it a post-it note. Okay. But it's actually just a sticky note, or a note you can stick somewhere. So why do we call it a post-it note? It's because there's a brand that's called Post-it, and it's owned by 3M. And they have a big problem, because everyone is now calling post it note. And you can see here, there are lots of different brands that produce these sticky notes, but we all still call it post-it note, especially in South Africa, in America, in England, we call it post-it notes. But, like you can see, there's only one company that owns the brand. That's called 3M. So that's a big problem for them. Another example is this. What do we call this sweet treat? Well, I call it a popsicle. Many people call it a popsicle. Okay? But it's actually a frozen ice treat on a stick. But it's so much easier to call it a Popsicle. But Popsicle is actually the brand name of a company. They own the Popsicle brand. Okay? What do you call this big TV that you see in basketball games? Do you know? Do you know? Ah, look, they are on the jumbo drawer. That's what you call it. And, or you just call it a big screen TV, but everyone in America calls it a Jumbotron. And the Jumbotron brand is actually owned by Sony. Okay? Some people in America call this what, do you know? A Xerox machine. And when you are going to make a copy or print something, they just say, let's Xerox it. Why do they call it Xerox? It was a company a long time ago, well, they still exist, I guess. They revolutionized printing. They revolutionized the printing industry so you can print really fast. So everyone in America calls it, well not everyone, some people in America still call it Xerox. So they're using the brand name. 
And we call this gentrification, when you start using one brand for all the products, like 7-Eleven for all the shops that are open until late. And I have an interesting story to tell you, two stories to tell you before I finish. What do we call this? Yes, I can hear it. Escalator. That's an escalator. Okay? Or, it's actually a moving staircase, but that's just a boring name. Now, this is interesting. The escalator trademark was owned by Otis Elevators. Okay? But what happened? So let me tell you the story. On May, the 29th of May, 1900, the escalator trademark was registered and it's later owned by Otis Elevators. Okay, so the company Otis Elevators owned the escalator trademark. They owned it. Only they could use it. But they did not use the brand name directly. So they lost the trademark. And now everyone that produces escalators or moving staircases can use the name escalator. So, what do you mean they did not use the brand correctly? They used the brand like this. They said, come buy an escalator. So what is the part of speech of the word escalator? Is it a noun, a verb, or an adjective? In that case, it's a noun. Okay? Come buy an escalator. Come buy an apple. Come buy a table. Okay? The court ruled that they used it incorrectly, and this is the way they should have used it. Combine escalating, rolling staircase. Now, the word escalator is more like what? A noun, an adjective, a verb? It's more like an adjective. You should clearly state that is not the product, that's just the name of the product. Or they can say escalator brand. So they can say, this is the brand. So, gentrification, if you can remember, gentrification means if we use one brand for many products. And what is this? Gendercide. Gendercide is when you lose your brand because of gentrification. That sounds like homicide or suicide. Gendercide. So you can see that. Now, this company, 3M, has to use their brand name like this. They have to put the word brand there so that it doesn't get killed off. And Band-Aid is a very popular Band-Aid. So when you get hurt, you'd use a Band-Aid. But they have to include this word, brand, now. And I will end with a really sad story. Do you all know this? What is that? You know? What do you call that? Yes. It's a yo-yo. So in 1929, Duncan F. Oh, Donald F. Duncan saw the potential of this product. He bought the company that produced the yo-yo with the name yo-yo. Okay? Very smart man. And during the 30s, 40s, and 50s, he successfully popularized, popularized this item. He made it so popular. Very good advertising. Everybody knew about the yo-yo. Then, they sold it. He had to sell the company and the name. Why? He had to sell it. The family lost the wonderful brand because they didn't use it correctly. And other companies took them to court. And because of all the money they have to pay, they had to pay to the lawyers. They had to sell the company. And they lost it. So all that hard work lost. So when you start your own company one day, you can start one now if you want to. Get a unique, easy to pronounce and cool, cool brand name like Van Groves. Design an awesome logo like our logo. But remember to protect your brand. Thank you.